Hello, it's 2020, hellish 2020, and I wasn't planning on shooting this video, but I just climbed up that ridge line behind me, and I just got triggered. I found this just crushed in the rocks up there, and it's ridiculous, people. So it kind of prompted me that, uh, we need to make some lifestyle changes. Uh, I'm wandering around off trail up in, uh, in my favorite place in the world, uh, the Yosemite High Country. It's freaking gorgeous up here. And uh, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna talk about a topic that a lot of people don't think is real for some reason or just to justify them making profits off ignoring this problem, but it's climate change or global warming, whatever you want to call, whatever you want to call it. It's 2020. It's October 5th, and I'm in shirt sleeves up at 10,300 feet. It's super warm up here. It's not normal. California is on fire. This is my native state. Lived here my whole life, and. Uh, there's a reason for it. It's getting hotter. We just recorded the highest average temperature in the history of recorded history of California. Uh, things are overheated and that the, the reason we're having the fires has nothing to do with raking the, fo the fo uh, forest. By the way, I think it's 96% of our, fo our, our forest lands are federally owned, the national forests. So whenever you hear anybody talking about raking the forests or taking care of them, that's on them. The state of California has its state parks and some, and the rest is private property. So we all need to do a better job, but the federal government needs to spend money to take care of things too. But it's not just raking the forest or, or taking care of the forest. It's, it's getting hotter. And uh, I studied environmental science and geology in college. I, didn't, I'm, I don't have a degree, uh, but my classroom is right here. I spend a lot of my free time in places like this. And I can touch and feel things. And I've seen things in my lifetime that I've never seen changed that shouldn't happen in a generation. They should take thousands and thousands of years. And I hear that argument frequently. Well, things warm up and cool down all the time. Yeah, over tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, not in 50 years. Uh, when I was in my 20s, and backpacking in this area, we couldn't get over these high mountain passes until August. And because the water, uh, I mean, the snow went and melt, uh, and you had just had to wait. Now the season starts in May and June in some seasons. You know, then sometimes people say, oh, look how much snow there is this year. We have really high, high snow years occasionally. Yeah, we do. The weather's being more, there's more extremes in our weather now. Higher temperatures in the atmosphere create uh, a lot of, a lot of bad things in, in the environment. In some parts of the country, you know, it's tornadoes and hurricanes. Here in California, it's all about water. So even if you don't come to these places, and I, this is my church right here. I love it out here. And uh, it still impacts you. And you say, how does it impact me? This water flows down and becomes our drinking water and waters our crops and we use it for dr drinking and uh, it's, you know this water ne it needs to flow down slowly. Uh, normally the snowpack is really a reservoir. The snowpack used to last in, into August and that would slowly melt and feed the reservoirs. Now we get these torrential floods in the springtime and it just flows right out in the ocean. I hear people that or don't believe in science, say that too. Why are, we, why are we letting the water flow out to the ocean? Some water needs to go to the ocean. Otherwise, the animals and organisms that live in the water wouldn't have anywhere to live. But in the, now that there's just torrents that flow into the ocean, the re reservoirs overflow some years. Some years we get no little to no rain at all, and then we're, we're screwed. So, uh, yeah, other things I'm seeing, I'm in Yosemite right now, and uh, just over this ridge this way, is uh, the Lyle Glacier. It stopped moving two years ago. It's receding and it's technically not a glacier anymore. It's the largest glacier in uh, Yosemite. Behind this mountain range behind me 
is uh, we were going to tr try to climb that Mount Conus, uh, which also has a glacier. It's there's smoke everywhere. Everything's on fire, and we've had big, big, big fires for the last 10, 20 years that we've never had before, and they're just getting bigger every year. And this year is the worst. We're having record fires, and it's because of global warming. It's dry, and uh, it's just th that's what's going to happen unless we do something. So, you know, what other changes does this non-scientist see? Well, these trees around here, those are white bark pines. A tree I dearly love because they grow in places that I love. Uh, high, wild places that don't have any competition. It's cold, it's a very short season. So things that can kill these trees, uh, they, don't have any, they don't have to compete with anything. So. They're, right now, these trees are being exposed to what's called the white pine blister rice, uh, rust. Uh, the bark beetles are getting to them. They never lived at this elevation before because it was too cold. So the, this goes before bristlecone pines and pretty much all trees. If a tree likes colder weather, what they do over generations is they, they move up slope. Uh, and they're getting uh, sloped out because they, they can only go so so high uh, they won't be able to go higher to survive anymore so they'll just die the bristlecone pines will die out there's animals that depend on this cold weather the one you see up here are the marmots and the, the pikas the pikas however you want to say it they the little chirp chirpy uh, little creek uh, cute rodents that you'll see climbing a mountain peak they are endangered, though they're just like trees. The way they survive, they move up slope. And a lot of them live on mountains. The top of the mountains is high as they can go. So you're gonna see these, a lot of these animals and a lot of the big changes unless we do something about it soon. So I was listening to a PBS show the other day, David Attenborough, he's that sophisticated British voice you hear on some of these uh, environmental documentaries love him and uh, he was saying uh, that the next 20 years is going to be the most important to, to stop climate change otherwise we're screwed basically so he also said uh, that mother nature is going to continue on with or without us uh, if we don't, if we destroy the environment for our, so that we can't live in, in it anymore, it'll make it inhospitable to us. Yeah, plants and animals will die off, but things will evolve. Uh, nature will be here. I want to be here. I want my kids and their kids and future generations to be here. We can stop it. Now, what do we, what can we do about it? We can do little things. Little things like, uh, I live in, Folsom, California. It's very hot here. It's this summer's been brutal. It's been well over 100 for more days than I would like to count. And we keep our thermostat at 80 degrees. I don't like it. We can afford it. My wife's not crazy about it. Uh, but it's bearable. If everybody just did a couple of degrees, make smarter purchases at the store. Buy things that are kinder to the environment. That includes. Uh, detergents. Uh, when you do wash a load of laundry, try to do a full load. Uh, let's buy more economical cars. Uh, don't buy the argument, I feel terrible for these people in those industries. Uh, the, the fossil fuels indus industries, they're dinosaurs. They're literally mining dinosaurs and they're becoming dinosaurs because the demand for gas isn't there anymore. Uh, those jobs will be evolving and we need to embrace cleaner technologies. There will still be jobs. We just need to do different jobs. There's absolutely no reason we burn coal. I'm sorry to people who, who rely on that industry, but it kills people. It causes uh, global warming. It emits gases into the atmosphere as all fossil fuel, fuels do. So let's let's carpool more let's take shorter trips let's embrace mass transit and electric electric vehicles uh support things with your pocketbook uh when you buy a new house try to buy one that's energy efficient ride a bike occasionally uh if everybody starts doing things 
it it will we can and it will make a difference uh, a lot of things we are doing here in california are kind of cutting edge uh, everybody mocks our our bullet train that still it will take probably another 50 years to finish but those are the kind of things that are expensive uh, you can use your you can you can use your vote to support climate change. Unfortunately, politics is, always enters into the equation. Uh, science is real. Whether you make it political or not, it's still going to happen. Uh, some things are a little uncomfortable or expensive occasionally, but let's just when you go to the store, look where things are made. Look uh, how efficient the things are. Look for better alternatives in your food in your cons in just the way you consume things and it's not just for me that we keep these places wild and beautiful it's for you too because we all rely on that sky being blue we were going to climb this mountain back here but there was no there, there's not going to be any views because there's so much freaking smoke it took me two uh, two weeks to get here because the park's been closed the entire state of california has has been closed off and on and for good reason. I totally support those, those closures. Uh, the national forests have all been closed for the most part. No campfires, anything like that. Yes, it's inconvenient, but we are on fire. And it's just the, the, the reality. So unless we do something, if you care about the future, you care about our planet, uh, please try to live a lifestyle and make good, good decisions. I'm sorry for this rant. This was an unplanned video. I'm just speaking from my uh, gut here and my passion of thing, the, the things I love. So uh, thanks for watching. Whether you agree or not, it doesn't hurt to try to be more green. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what we can do to protect our future generations and uh, these amazing sacred places. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'd love to hear your input in the comments. I'll check them, uh, whether you agree or don't agree, and uh, happy trails.